Little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years 
are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth. And praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. How silently, how silently. The wondrous gift is given, so God imparts to human hearts the blessing of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ in heaven. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. O come to us, abide with us. Our Lord, Emmanuel. Good evening and welcome to our special Christmas carol service. We're delighted to have you join us. If you're watching online on our online platform or whether you're watching in 360, we're delighted to have you come and join us. We're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus tonight. And let's join in our first carol. Uh, join in. The words will appear on the screen. And we're going to be led as we sing, O come all ye faithful.
Father, I thank you for the, the amazing words that we've sang there about how we will praise your name forever. And God, that really is what we will do for eternity. But God, we thank you for tonight and that opportunity to just join around the manger in front of us, Lord, and praise and will come and adore the King who was born, Lord, who we celebrate at this time of year. Father, as we hear the readings and hear the songs and hear your word later on, Father, I pray you will have open hearts to hear all you want to say to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Every year when we do our carol service, we try to involve different people who have maybe joined the church or, or you know, come along to the church uh, during the year. Now, this year's obviously been a very different year, but we're going to hear our first reading read by Hannah, who came up to study in Shetland in the summer. So she's going to read uh, about the, the angel when the angel appeared to Mary. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come onto you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the, Lord, the angel left her. It's great to have our kids pastor who's been inputting into all of our services this year. So we're going to hear from Sarah now. Merry Christmas, Kids Club and all of our New Life Church families. This evening, I'm going to read The Christmas Promise by Alison Mitchell and Catalina Everecci. This is a story about the first ever Christmas. A long, long time ago, so long ago that it's hard to imagine, God promised a new king. He wasn't an ordinary king, like the ones we see on TV or in books, he would be different. He would be a new king, a rescuing king, a forever king. And do you know what? One precious night, God kept his Christmas promise. Would you like to know how he did it? The Christmas story starts with an angel. Whoosh! He came from God to see Mary. The angel had a special message. Mary, you're going to have a baby. He will be a special baby. God promises that your baby is going to be king. Not for a little time, but forever and ever. He will be a forever king. Mary was going to marry Joseph. So God sent an, another angel. Whoosh! He came to see Joseph, and the angel had a special message. Mary is going to have a special baby, said the angel to Joseph. Her baby is going to be king and will rescue his people. He will be a rescuing king. God had promised that his new king would be born in a little city called Bethlehem. And that's where Mary and Joseph went. But Bethlehem was very busy with lots and lots and lots of people. So when the baby was born, he had to sleep in a manger instead of a bed. All the other mangers in Bethlehem held food for hungry animals to munch. But this manger held a tiny baby. It was God's special new king. 
The shepherds in the fields had such a surprise. It was quiet and dark, and the sheep were snoozing. Then, whoosh, an angel popped into the sky. Now the sky was bright, and the shepherds were so, so scared. But the angel had a special message for them, too. Don't be afraid. I have wonderful good news for you, the angel said. God's chosen king has been born tonight. He is going to rescue his people, just as God promised. He will be the rescuing king. Then lots and lots of other excited angels joined in the celebration. The shepherds were really excited. They went rushing to see the new king. And there he was, lying in a manger, just as the angel had said. But they weren't the only ones who had heard the good news about the promised new king. Some wise men living far, far away had also sent a message. It was dark and it was quiet and they were watching the stars. When whoosh, a new star popped into the sky. The star had a special message and the wise men knew what it meant. A very special king has been born, the king for all God's people. This child was the new promised king. The wise men were so excited, so they went on a long, long journey to see the new king. And there he was, just as the star had shown them. Everything God promised came true. There are lots and lots of different kings in the world, but God sent the greatest king of all. He sent a new king, a rescuing king, a forever king. And do you know what this king's name is? His name is Jesus. Our second reading tonight is going to be from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. And it's going to be read by Dave Sinclair. Dave's one of the local doctors. And he's going to read about the birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. A child has been given A king of our freedom Sing for the light has come This is Christmas Come and behold Him Bring gifts before Him Joy to the world Worship the sun This is Christmas this is Jesus
third reading tonight is going to be read by Rachel Morris, who joined the church earlier this year as one of our youth pastors. Her and Tim uh, came up, and you're going to hear a little from Tim uh, later on. But she's going to read from Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flock of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognise him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host, a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. Our next song tonight is going to be Silent Night, played uh, by Jane and some of the, the young people from New Life. And they're going to lead us in that song together.
reading tonight is going to be read by one of the shepherds who appeared at our New Life Nativity down in Harrison Square just a, a week and a half ago and it's going to be read by James Lear. He's going to read Luke chapter 2 verse 15 to 20. When the angels had returned to heaven the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem, let's see this thing what has happened which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. So Christmas time, there's always two types of people and you'll know which one you are. When it comes to unwrapping all of the presents on Christmas day, you're either the person who very neatly, you unfold each corner one at a time, you save all the wrapping paper, you might reuse it next year if it's the right size. We all know someone like that, you might be that person. Or you might be the other type of person who's what I call the Wolverine. You just get stuck in, you shred that wrapping paper, you forget about it, it gets chucked in a, paper, in a like bin bag by the end of the day, you just can't wait to see the present inside. Well, I thought we should find out uh, how good some of our unwrapping skills are with our youth. Uh, but what better way to do this than with a box of some tissues? So I'm going to invite my three not-so-volunteers who don't really know they're about to do this, uh, but Kayla Marie, Kirsty, and Ariana, could you guys please come up here for a second? Okay, so for those who don't know what's about to happen is these guys have a tissue box and what I need all of you to do is put one arm behind your back like you've already done which is good and with one hand only you are going to need you need to remove all of the tissues from the box but one at a time. Whoever's going to be the fastest will obviously win. We'll keep going until all of you have done it. Now, what I need everyone who's watching this right now to do is in our live chat, post a comment of who you think is going to win this challenge. Do you think it's going to be Kayla Marie? Do you think it's Ariana? Or do you think it's Kirsty? Who is the fastest at destroying a tissue box? Now, just to make it clear, you can only remove one tissue at a time. If you pull out a chunk, you'll be disqualified and you will lose. The rules are brutal, but it's simple. Okay, and from everyone in our room, I need some uh, audience participation. Let's see some cheering on, some encouraging, all of that kind of stuff for who you think you're going to win. Uh, parents, you should probably cheer on your own children. Um, okay, if we're ready, on three, two, one, go. <laughs> Ariana's almost got it. Kayla Marie's almost there. Kirstie's not far behind. Ariana has done. Keep going, keep going. Let's see who gets second. And Kayla Marie's got it. Well done, Kirstie. Wow, well done for everyone who in the chat did uh, guess Ariana correctly. Pat yourself on the back, give yourself a high five. Well done. Thank you to our three volunteers and you now get the prize of cleaning up your own mess. Uh, have a great Christmas, youth. We'll see you in the new year. Our final reading tonight is going to be the story of the wise men from Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Visitors from the east. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? 
We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, For this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Before we come to the Word tonight, we're going to join in our next song together, and Frida is going to lead us in this song. It's a song called King of Kings.
I'm going to read you tonight from Luke chapter 2, verse 15 to 18, and it says this. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. We just heard this part of the story read by a couple of shepherds, as you'll have seen there. And throughout our Christmas season in church, we've been focusing on this topic called Bethlehem. While they were there, the time came. And we've been looking at this, this phrase, and we looked at how God does incredible things in seemingly insignificant places in his time. Uh, Tim, our youth pastor, shared a couple of weeks ago on while they were there, the king was born. And on Sunday just there, we looked at while they were there, the angels proclaimed who he was. Now, one of the great things to do with Christmas is Christmas movies. Now, most movies that in our lifetime, I'm, I imagine, we will watch once. But for some reason, we seem to have a little more grace with Christmas movies. I wonder if anybody here could tell me, what is your favourite Christmas movie? Just shout out, somebody tell me, what's your favourite? Muppets Christmas Carol. I will not say that relates anything to the person that shouted that out. At Home Alone, we have there. Any others? Elf. Elf is seemingly very popular. Anyway, eh, there's lots of them that are that are favourites. And maybe you've found over the last few years, you've seen the rising number of streaming services. You have Netflix, you have Prime, you have Disney+. Plus. And, and I don't know about you, but my experience is with some of these sites is that, you know, you think, I'll find something to watch. And so you go on it and you start to scroll through. And even though there are hundreds of films that you can watch, there's nothing that you really want to watch. And sometimes, you know, you might find and you think, oh, if, if me and Tiff are sitting down uh, to watch something, you'll think, oh, I'd quite fancy watching this. Tiff, Tiff what do you think? And she's like, no, nah, not up for that. And then, uh, then she'll say, you know, what about this one and such and such? And I'll say, well, maybe, honey, but inside I'm thinking I'd rather eat my own feet than watch that. But, you know, what a happy wife, happy life. But, uh, you know, so what happens is you just end up watching Elf again because uh, it's a great movie. But I wonder if sometimes, actually, that can be a little of how we live our lives. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I believe that each and every one of us has a search in our lives. Sometimes maybe we can't put our finger on what we're searching for. You know, some people have described life as a search for meaning and purpose. Others have said that there's a search to find ourselves. I remember one of my wife's friends, she went off to New Zealand to find herself. I don't know which part of her she thought got lost in New Zealand, but there was something of her that she thought that she was going to go and find herself. You know, interesting that uh, this can be something that can be an experience for a lot of people. As I said, you know, sometimes people just can't put their finger on what they're searching for. Some things cause us to feel satisfied for a short time, like eating a Chinese takeaway. Why is it when you eat a Chinese takeaway in the morning, you're absolutely starving? So it's satisfied for a short while, but then the next day you're still hungry. And ultimately that can be like the search of our lives when we're searching for something we think we'll find meaning and purpose here and there. And then what happens is that like in Netflix where you turn on and you flick through and you can't find what you're looking for, that can be like the search sometimes of our life. See, your search can take you through all the genres. You can search through the action and adventure and maybe you try and find meaning and purpose and thrills and, and, and adventure. Maybe you like the romance. Every romantic comedy has the exact same story. Two unlikely people fall in love, fall out, decide they can't live to get without each other and then get back together in some cheesy romantic scene. Every romantic comedy, I've spoiled every single one for you there, but people seem to love them. But that can actually be another place where people search for meaning and purpose. They search for it in romance and the thrill and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes there can be a search for it in the thriller. And some things in our lives maybe have happened to us or are a result of choices that we have made. Things, you know, we, we find our lives maybe take that genre of a thriller. Documentaries, which are a particular favorite of mine, you know, maybe there's sometimes a search for knowledge and understanding and we think that we will find purpose and, and reason in these areas of life. Maybe you think your life's a comedy. Maybe you think that happiness is what life is all about, but the thing about happiness is happiness depends on what is happening. 
So if you go through a bad time, then often happiness disappears. It's a difference between joy, but that's another story for another day. But, but actually, we all go through times of sorrow. And you know, all of these genres we could probably relate to at some point in our lives as we search for meaning and purpose, because that's the search of life. All of us go on at some point. But you see, what I've found here is that maybe, just maybe, the search for what we are looking for is actually found in the Christmas story. You see, the Christmas story is actually about a journey to discovery. I'll take you back to that first, she- that first Christmas where the shepherds are in the field and the angels appear to them and they're terrified. And we looked at this on Sunday and they proclaimed, where the angels proclaimed who he was, they said he was Christ the Lord. And they said to him, to them, you will find him wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. So there was this search element to it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says this, that God has set eternity in the hearts of men. Within each and every one of us, there's a search for eternity. There's a search for meaning. And I believe it can only find, we can only find the answer to that in God. St. Augustine said this, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until it finds its rest in thee. There's something of that search that all of us, all of humanity finds. And it can only be discovered, the end of that search, what we are looking for can only be discovered when we look at the Christmas story. You see, the Christmas story doesn't just begin at Christmas, it begins actually right at the very start when Adam and Eve failed and God made this world that was good. And he didn't make us as robots, but he loved us and so he gave us free will. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And they broke what God had made that was good. And so it ripped apart that relationship between humanity and God. And as a result of that, each of us are born with a searching and longing for that relationship with God to be repaired. Only God can fill that. Jim Carrey, the actor, said, I wish that everyone could get rich and famous and get everything they ever dreamed of so they could see that that's not the answer. Some people think that's what the end of the search is. But as it says in this, you know, the the Old Testament always points to this day where there's a Savior that's coming. Even 800 years before, it was prophesied that Jesus' birth would take place. And so the first Christmas point was pointed to in the past. But it also is the day that everything changed. When when it pointed, first Christmas pointed to a day as well where where Jesus would come and the purpose why he came was so that he could bridge the gap between us and, and, and God. And he did that on the cross. So what happens is that the shepherds, they go on that search and they find the baby wrapped there it's exactly as it was said. And it says that they were astonished. What an incredible thing that they saw that night. You know, it's, we, we tonight can find our purpose and meaning. We can find the end of our search, like the shepherds did, when we come to find the baby of Christmas. Not just the baby of Christmas, but we've come to find the Lord of Christmas. You see, this child was the one who was told about who would be the saviour of the world. The only way we can have that search met is when We find him as the shepherds did. So as you're scrolling through Netflix next time, maybe you think, I'll try this comedy. I'll try this romance. Or maybe that's just a picture of your life tonight. Maybe like Bono sang all these years ago, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I want to tell you that tonight, you can search all the genres, but the only time you will find is when you find him, the baby that is in a major I love, I read this verse in Isaiah 45 the other week, and it says this, I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner. I would not have told the people of Israel to seek me if I could not be found. God wants to be found. He wants you to find him. And it's my prayer that at this Christmas, that we will find him as the shepherds did that night. I want us all to bow our heads just now. And wherever you're watching, why don't we repeat this prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this time of year. Thank you that you came. I want to find you. I want to experience you. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life today. Be the Lord of my life. Amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight and you meant it, 
then why not click in the in the, the chat and it says raise hand. And you can raise your hand tonight and you can know the search. The Bible says that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. And you can go through for private prayer and one of our team will pray with you and give you something to help you on your journey. But we're going to close tonight with probably my favorite carol of all time. And we're going to hear the Christmas message proclaimed and we're going to declare who he is as we finish our service tonight. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. This is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long
Father, I thank you for this privilege of meeting together at Christmas. Lord, may we pray that we'll, that we'll have such a blessed time. Lord, this year's been strange, but I thank you you've been with us through it all. May we remember the truth of that song in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to take this time to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I hope you have a great Christmas and a Happy New Year. If we can be of any help, get in touch. But we'd love to see you at New Life in the New Year. God bless. Yeah. <laughs>